and welcome back to the channel. So I'm very excited because my husband and I have our baby moon coming up. In a short couple of months, we're gonna be welcoming our baby girl into the world. And if you don't know what a baby moon is, it's essentially this trip you take before the baby comes. And like I said in a couple videos ago, I love to travel. I love traveling in the spring and summer, and I'm a bit of a planning nerd. So I'm sure there are a lot of you starting to plan your spring and summer vacations. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you two things. The first is how I plan our travel adventures. This has basically been my tried and true method for the past four or five years. And then the second is I'm going to show you how to create a travel planner in Milanote. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Of course, step one is choosing a destination and time to go. When we're trying to decide where we want to go, some things that we consider are like, how much time do we have to go? What is our budget? What kind of vacation do we want? Do we want something a little bit more relaxing or adventurous? And is there a preferred season that we would like to travel in? After we know where we want to go, we can start thinking about when we want to go. And when we think about this, we consider one, shoulder season versus peak season. If at all possible, I don't like traveling during peak season it's just because it's a lot more expensive and it's a lot more crowded so can we travel during shoulder season and still get nice weather and still be able to do everything another thing i consider is is there a preferred season for photography for example if we were to go to japan i would definitely want to visit during the springtime because i would love to photograph japan during their cherry blossom season other things we consider is, is there a high risk season? So for example, if we were to travel somewhere, is there a bad season for monsoons, hurricanes, tornadoes, wildfires? And can we avoid visiting these destinations during those really high risk seasons? Step number two is to brainstorm a list of things to do in that city, places you wanna photograph and where you gotta eat. So I like to start this search on Pinterest. I'll just search in Pinterest, like things to do in the city that we're traveling to. I also like to go check out YouTube to see if any of the travel vloggers that I subscribe to have been to the city we're going to and if they have have any recommendations. I also like checking out Instagram. I find the most helpful place on Instagram is actually the tourism board's Instagram pages because a lot of times they post to their stories and their feed like things to do in the city and restaurants to try. And lastly, I'll talk to people, whether it's on Instagram or in real life in person. I love getting recommendations from people that used to live in that city, not necessarily traveled to that city because I find they can give you a different perspective on things to do and where you gotta eat. So I love getting recommendations from them. Something I recently started doing too is when we arrive at our destination, I'll also go ask the front desk at our hotel if they have any recommendations. So yeah, those are kind of like the four primary methods that I go about starting to build our activity list. Step number three is to create an itinerary. Now, when it comes to creating an itinerary, it's not about creating a set schedule that we have to follow and that the activities can't move around. It's more about making sure that we can do everything in the time frame that we have there. So if we can't do everything, what needs to get cut or can we make the trip longer? As well, it helps us to make sure that our trip is balanced between relaxing and taxing activities. So a taxing activity might be going on a hike. And my current state, uh, especially when we go on our baby moon, I'm going to be close to 35 weeks pregnant. So even a five kilometer hike is going to be a pretty taxing activity versus a relaxing activity might be checking out the local museum. So I like to make sure that our itinerary is balanced between the day and the week. That way we're not exhausted by the end. So I keep our itinerary to two activities per day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. That way, if we finish an activity early and if we have the time and energy, we can do another one, but there's no pressure to do more. I also don't schedule in where we're going to eat. If it makes sense to eat at a restaurant or eat at a certain place because we're going to be in that area, then sure. Or if we're celebrating a special occasion and we want to eat somewhere special, then I might put in the calendar that we're going to eat somewhere specific on this day because we're celebrating something then I will, but generally I don't like setting in the schedule where we're gonna eat. I just kind of like playing that by ear. Step number four is booking your transportation and hotel. Now, depending on where you are going, your transportation needs will vary, whether or not you need a ferry or a flight, 
When I'm booking flights now, I do pay extra close attention to layover times. So one of the first trips that we ever booked on went on vacation was to Denver, Colorado to see a hockey game. And we probably chose the cheapest package that we can find with like a flight and hotel combo. But what we didn't realize when we booked it is that we only had a 20 minute layover in LAX. So if you've ever been to LAX, you know that is not enough time to make it to your next gate. It was a nightmare, so I like to pay extra close attention now to layover times. And then when I'm choosing our hotel, I actually have a particular process that I follow now. And so what I like to do is I actually will map out all of the activities that we're doing on that trip at that destination. And I just use my Google Maps and my like the itinerary that we just built. And so I'll map out everything that we're about to do. And then when I go on Expedia to find our hotel to see what's in our price range, I'll kind of cross reference the map and the Expedia map to see if there's a hotel that is walking distance to all of the activities that we're doing, if at all possible. If it's not possible, is it driving distance? We've made mistakes in the past too, where we chose a hotel that wasn't even close to everything that we wanted to do. So we had to continue taking taxis or shuttles back and forth and it just wasn't ideal. So I really like to pay attention to make sure that our hotel if at all possible is walking distance to the attractions we want to visit and if not that it's driving distance. Step number five is to book any activities. Now this really depends on the activity. Some activities I will just buy skip the line tickets the day of. Some activities I will actually pre-buy our tickets in advance. Um, when we went to Vancouver Island last summer, when we did our whale watching tour and our raptor center tour, I actually bought those tickets in advance because I wanted to make sure we were able to do those activities while we were on the island. And then versus when we went to the Malahat Skywalk, I think I actually just bought skip the line tickets the morning of. So it really depends on the activity. My rule for booking activities is I don't like pre like in advance purchasing them for the first or second day that we're supposed to be at a destination. And it's just because what happens if we get delayed at the ferry or at the airport and we end up missing our activities and we can't actually get a refund because we were within the cancellation window. So I just prefer to keep those activities for like the third day and on. As well, sometimes booking activities can be cheaper when you book them in person versus online. When we went to Greece, this happened to us a lot where um, we wanted to take a catamaran cruise and it was actually more expensive to book online it was like $20 more expensive per person to book online versus talking to like a person and going to a kiosk or an agency and booking our catamaran cruise so I do like to keep this in mind as well if the activity has a photography element to it is there a preferred time to do the activity for lighting sake this isn't always possible but I also like to keep this in mind all right, so that is how I plan our travel adventures. Now I wanna show you how I create a travel planner in Milanote. So this is just a blank travel planner template that I have here in Milanote. And I've done a video before on how I use Milanote to like organize my YouTube boards and everything like that. But basically all of the functions are still the same in Milanote. There are some new functions such as like you can create long form documents, you can add maps, you can actually change the card colors now. So before you used to only be able to see this strip and now you can actually change the whole card color, which you couldn't do before. So that part is kind of nice, um, but everything else is the same. You can add images, upload files, create notes, to-dos, boards, columns. These are like notes here. This is a to-do list, this is a column, this whole thing is a board. But basically when I'm creating kind of um, filling out this information in my travel planner is I start with our hotel transportation information and I'll get into why I have it organized the way that I do in a minute here. But basically I'll first write out our check-in and check-out information. And I do this because if we're staying at like multiple hotels, um, for example, when we went to Greece, I think we stayed in like four or five different hotels. I always like writing out in whatever travel planner the check-in and check-out times of the places that we're staying because then they kind of get jumbled together then I have like our itinerary so like I discussed like we only do kind of like two activities per day but I'll just break down like on Monday these are the activities that we're going to do Tuesday this is what we have planned and then I'll just kind of keep filling that out and I'll change it as we go and then after that, I have like a to-do list. So, you know, book hotel, book ferry, book flight, any of the to-do things that we have to do, I'll just kind of fill in in here just so I know um, what else there's left to do for a trip. 
And then you have like a resources column where I just like to put if there's something interesting to do in a city and I want to like be able to refer back to it or if they've just got um, maybe it's a blog article and it's got a, like a lot of good information about visiting that city and I just want to have like an easy reference back to it. I will actually just use the Milano web clipper that I have installed and that way I can actually just um, web clip it straight to my travel board. So if we just go here, this is like just the Soyuz Desert Center website as an example. And with the web clipper, I can actually just go to this little button over here and it'll load the preview. I can save it to my travel planner. And then as you can see, it'll pop up over here and you can just drag, drop, and you can actually change the description so it's a little bit shorter. But that way you just have like easier access to some of that information, whether it's like YouTube um, or a blog article or anything like that. It's a really nice handy tool to have. And then my last one is the budget. So I just like to keep track of how much we're spending on the trip when it comes to hotel and parking and food and attractions and stuff like that. And um, just to keep track of how much we're spending. And so I have it organized the way that it is because when I use it on my phone, if I use it on my phone, I like to be able to see it in a certain way. And when I created my original meal and note video, I didn't actually know that you could do this, but someone had commented on that video that if you create these arrows between the notes, it'll actually create that order in your phone. So I have hotel over here and it's first because that is oftentimes the information I need first when we are traveling is our hotel transportation information. And then I have the itinerary because that's most likely the second common thing that I'm going to be looking for in my travel planner is what we're supposed to be kind of doing on each day. And after that, it's like the to do, the resources and the budget because they're oftentimes not really something that I'm going to be looking at a ton when we're on the go. It's mostly going to be the quick access information of our hotel and transportation as well as our itinerary. So that's just why I have it organized the way that I do. Um, a couple things I just want to mention that I kind of read from my last video about meal and note was one, whether or not you can use it offline. And I believe you have to be like online or on the internet in order to use meal and note because it is an internet browser, internet, um, software that I use to kind of create everything. So I am like on the internet right now using Milanote. So I don't think you can use it offline. I think you do need to have some sort of internet connection or data connection. And then the second question that I got asked is about the Milanote web clipper. And like I said, this is um, how I kind of was able to clip this Soyuz Desert Center website to the travel planner is through the Milanote web clipper. And basically it's an extension that you can use for Google Chrome and Safari. I'm not sure about other internet surfers out there, but it's basically an extension that you install onto your web browser and then it shows up as like a button over here so then when you find a website or blog article or whatever you can kind of just hit it and it'll save that whole thing over to your Milano board um, so it's also really really handy and I use it a lot um, but yeah that is basically how I create a travel planner in Milano so there you have it, my recipe for planning our travel adventures. Leave me a comment down below if you have any fun spring or summer vacations planned as well. Are you the type of traveler that likes to wing it and go with the flow or do you like to plan everything out? As you can tell from today's video, I definitely like to plan things out and be organized when we travel. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then hit that like button below and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.